Welcome to another episode of the Career Breakthrough Series. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe, rate and review my show to allow me to bring on more incredible guests like Jake. My guest on the show today is Jake Parsons, who is an international race car driver. Jake began his career racing go-karts and progressing through the ranks until he finally reached the stage of the World Go-Karting Championship, which he then won. From here, Jake took his own path and didn't listen to the opinions or influences of others. So taking a career that's a bit off the beaten track or taking something that's not the norm is an obstacle in itself, but Jake decided all the way to follow his own path and look at the success he's achieved now. So Jake has amassed an impressive record with two championships, two vice championships, 18 race victories and 35 podiums across six different race series competing throughout Australia, Asia, Europe, the Middle East and the USA. And he's driven some amazing vehicles and established some amazing partnerships with companies like Audi, Volkswagen and Lamborghini. Jake shares some incredible advice and insight into what the life of a daily international race car driver is like and what some of the biggest obstacles and challenges he's had to overcome are. As well as, like I said before, having to pick a career that's not the norm or what other people think you can do and having to really believe in yourself and create some ma- a massive self-image and uh, persistence and perseverance in what you do. So enough talking, let's get started and get into the interview. I'll see you inside. Guys, welcome to another episode of the Career Breakthrough Series. I'm your po- host, Paul Ames. On the show today, I've got an inspiring guest who really shows that by chasing your dreams, anything is possible in your career. I'm talking about Jake Parsons. Jake is an international race car driver who's driven cars all over the world in many different circuits and won multiple championships and podiums. Jake now currently lives in Japan, where he races for Team Saad, driving an incredible-looking Audi R8. I have to say, it looks like an absolutely amazing car, Jake. I'd, uh, I'd be pretty stoked to be able to drive that thing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit of a beast, yeah. It's cool yeah. to be in it this year. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Jake, so thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show, man. Um, if you could just give my audience a bit of a background into basically what your upbringing was like for you and what actually sparked your, your interest in motorsport. Right. Um, so I guess backtracking to where it all started, I grew up in, uh, originally born in Melbourne, Australia, and uh, grew up there uh, and was kind of inspired through the car culture within my family uh, on my dad's side, uh, as well as my uncle who raced go-karts. And Ooh. so uh, yeah, I'd, I'd grow up sort of uh, going and watching him race and my grandpa and I would watch from the side of the track and just kind of got inspired from there and decided pretty early on really that's what I wanted to do so the game's been just focusing on making that a reality definitely man uh, yeah they don't have such a massive influence obviously having that family background who are really interested in, into it um I know my uh my family are pretty much the same they're into their old muscle cars and Tiranas and uh the old the old uh v8s and stuff like that here so yeah I can completely relate mate um, so, Jake, obviously, choosing a career path like that is quite different to the norm. I can imagine you would have had to overcome a lot of adversity and obstacles and challenges to be able to break through to where you currently are. What do you think would be some of the toughest challenges that you've had to overcome to, you know, potentially get onto that path? And, uh, yeah, what's, what's helped you succeed in your path? I think definitely when you do something alternative, there's a lot of challenges that are unique that you'll face and can't always relate those to what other people go through. Uh, so it's sort of like a, a solo journey in some ways to go and do something uh, which is not not the norm. Um, so some challenges through my career so far have been, obviously, I started racing when I was very young. I started at nine, wow. so um, which was at the time it was fun and uh, just, you know, pure enjoyment and, racing as a, as a career was sort of like something so distant away. I never really thought about it too much, but it got quite full on through high school, through the later part of high school, because I started to step into racing cars at that point and uh, trying to juggle my exams and things like that. And uh, it, w- it was difficult to manage the combination of the racing demands, the school demands, and then the friendship demands as well. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult to get through high school, study well, go to the parties and and have good bonds with friends and stuff. So when racing was uh, joined into that whole mix, it was pretty difficult to do everything the way I wanted to. And uh, that that was definitely a challenge and it 
made it very important for me to be structured and systematic and, you know, go off a good schedule and things like that for it to all work. And for my final high school uh, tests, the exams at the end of the year, I had two races in amongst the tests. So it was uh, very demanding at the time. And uh, that, that was definitely a challenge that no one else was facing uh, at that point uh, in high school. It was sort of just all in exam mode. Yeah, um, yes, yeah, so that was that was quite tricky. Uh, and then I guess another challenge was uh, moving away from home. So sort of doing that. Um, it, when I was nineteen, I was flying to through Asia a lot, spending a lot of time over there for racing, which was a pretty different culture. Yeah. But I enjoyed the uh, experience and enjoyed the uh, I guess the adventure that came with that. Definitely. So that that was all part of the fun. Um, but yeah, I guess when a lot of your friends go and do the normal uh, sort of, you know, go to university together, they can all maintain the, the friendship groups and things like that. But if you're distant a lot of the time, uh, going and doing your events and competing, then you have to really work hard to make sure the connection stays strong. So those were a couple of things that I found through the, through the journey and learned a lot through the years uh, to, to manage them really. Definitely. Thanks so much for sharing, Jake. And um, you should be so proud of yourself, man. It's, I've been following your journey for a while and it's incredible what you've achieved and a testament to your persistence and hard work. And I can imagine just hearing you say about all that stuff, trying to juggle all of that high school friendships, you know, exams and uh, racing, you know, top, top mm-hmm. cars. And uh, yeah, your, your time management skills must have been phenomenal. Or, you know, yeah, it have to be very systematic, like you said. So yeah, that, that's incredible what you've, uh, what you've achieved there, man. Yeah, thanks so much. It's uh, it, it was all learnt along the way, I guess, and definitely was great to work with Dave Diggle and the Smart Mind Institute. So it's a uh, mental performance sort of uh, tactic that I that I've brought into racing, and it's enabled me to sort of manage everything well and and uh, learn a lot about how to perform. Yeah, definitely. I had a good chat to Dave the other day. Um, he seems like a great guy and an incredible business that he's uh, created for himself and been helping a lot mm. of athletes. So um, just touching on that, obviously, um, I know there's quite a big mental and physical challenge and demand on uh, being a professional race car driver. What are, what are some of the uh, routines or some of the, the exercises or things you do to keep yourself in a peak level of performance to ensure that you get your best out of your racing? Right. I guess there's a few things. The, the really standard thing is go to the gym. Um, which, which everyone does, uh, but that you know sort of sets you up on the physical side to be prepared to drive the car. But like you don't do anything without thinking about it first. So the mental side is is more important in my in my sort of opinion sure. to be fine tuned uh, and very systematic, so you can turn up to an event and perform consistently every time. So. That's been uh, a big factor that I've been increasing through the years. And uh, it's kind of not that common yet, I guess, in uh, particularly racing. But I can see it sort of growing and it's becoming more of the, the done thing now. So it's cool to see that. Definitely, man. Um, and I know you've uh, you've had partnerships with Lamborghini and some of the big top uh, car dealerships or car race teams in the world. So um, obviously, and, and you've won championships and uh, numerous podiums. So what, what, what goes through your mind when you're racing at top speed and, you know, you're, you're trying to achieve the best you can? Like what's some of the, the thoughts that go through your head? Obviously, you have to be so quick on your, your reflexes, but what do, you, what do you think helps make you more focused and determined to, to win the race? I think... Um for me, what's been really useful and really beneficial is breaking things down into sort of different levels. So you have your, your big objective, your big goal, which would be, for example, to race in, for me to race in Super GT, which is what I'm doing now. Um, and so the years before that, it would be sort of focusing on, right, this year I have to do well in the championship to get to the bigger picture, which is Super GT. And, uh, it's made up of say 12 races in a year. So each race is just one step closer and you don't make it a, a bigger deal than what it needs to be. Yep. So you can sort of calmly go, yep, this race, go into the next race. And then uh, you can keep everything in perspective and the emotions stay under control and you can sort of keep your, your eye on the direction you're heading. So you're always making progress forward. So I think that's been good for me just setting obviously knowing where the big goal is and then setting goals along the way on how I reach that. Do I need to increase the skills or I need to 
increase the marketing for sponsors or whatever it needs to be. That's great, man. I, I think that's really great advice, you know, focusing on the little steps and need to take you up to that bigger step as well. That's obviously, you know, getting those smaller achievements leads to, keeps you driven and motivated to pursue that bigger goal as well, which is great. Um, so, yeah, Jake. Jack- Jacob, I'd um, love to know, um, say if any of my audience are looking into getting into motorsport or potentially tackle a career that's a bit off the normal track, um, what's some of the best advice do you think has really helped you, you know, transition from, uh, as you say, into your sc- from your school uh, into being a pro race car driver? What do you think some of the best mm. things that you've implemented? I think for me, some of the best things that have worked have been doing what works for me. So there's obviously... In anything you do, it might be school or it might be racing or it might be playing soccer or, or anything. There's like the traditional path to go and do something or consider the norm. You might go and do two training camps a year with, you know, this uh, team or something like that. And that's what everyone wants to do. But I find the best strategy that's worked for me has been, as I said before, you set that goal of where you want to be and then just work backwards from there. And what do you need to learn or what do you need to uh acquire to be ready for that and then just go and pick your own path to make it happen rather than just jumping into the system so for me that's it's it's uncommon for drivers i guess to go into asia uh from australia often you go up to the v8 supercar route or you go follow europe or something like that um and for me i've just been inspired by technology of the future so things like formula e uh is a new series which is basically electric formula one Oh, cool. And uh, that's, yeah, it's, it's in its early stages, but uh, I think it's going to be something pretty cool in the future. So just things like that is what I enjoy. So that's what I go and chase uh, in amongst the industry, which is the stuff that I sort of find works for me, not necessarily the most, uh, I don't know, the most popular or the most uh, well sort of trodden path, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. I think that's brilliant that you've chosen, you know exactly what you want and you're taking that path regardless of what the norm is. Because I think I, I've talked about that a fair bit, obviously with my clients and my business and that as well. You know, it's such an important thing not to let the influence of others impact your life and your career uh, because so many people have, have, everyone has an opinion, but you know, if you start taking yeah. on board, <laughs> that, that becomes your life, what someone else wants for your life, not what you want. So. 100%. Yeah, that's brilliant, man. Um, so I'd love to know, Jake, you've, you've obviously driven some incredible supercars or cars from around the world. What do you reckon be your best car that you've ever driven in the, out of everything you've ever had? Uh, I, I got to test a Formula 2 car in uh, the end of 2015. So it was called GP2, which is basically the series just below F1. Um, so I got to do a, a test in that as a prize, um, and that was bloody awesome. <laughs> it was about 320 k's as the top speed, so Ooh. that's been the fastest for me so far. Nice, man. That would be uh, that would be pretty exhilarating, yeah. And I'll, I've seen some of the photos on your Instagram and that of some of the cars you've driven, and uh, t- <laughs> taking your own Audi R8 out, uh, that looks amazing too, man. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Uh, we're with Audi this year, so we're sort of like one of the Audi... Uh, Japan teams within uh, Super GT. So, uh, yeah, my previous racing style has been on the Formula car path. So it's been like sort of the F1 looking machines. And uh, this year in Super GT, it's been a bit of a new experience jumping across to the GT side. So I'm loving the uh, the challenge of it so far. Perfect, man. I'm um, just touching on that and how big a transition it is going to live out in your own um, in Japan. Obviously, that shares its own level of barriers and obstacles over there. Um, so, how did you find the transition over there, where you know you potentially have a different language barrier, different customs, different way of life over there to what it is here in Australia? How did you find you? How did you find these successfully uh, integrated with that society and culture over there? Yeah, it's been quite tricky, especially the last couple of weeks. I uh, just found an apartment, so I had to get my visa, had to get the Japanese bank account, all these kind of things that oh, wow. had to be done before I could uh, even find a place to stay. And uh, then trying to get my bed delivered is difficult in Japanese, <laughs> so everything's pretty hard right now. But uh, I'm doing Japanese lessons every week, and cool. I'm excited to be able to speak Japanese. I'm excited to be... Uh, making waves through this industry over here. So for me, it's a challenge right now, but it's only a short-term sort of deal. It's going to be, you know, part of the process and I'll be where I want to be by the end of it. So it's, yeah, it's a bit hard work right now, but it'll be fine after a year, I, I would say. 
Definitely, man. I, I love your uh, your growth mindset or your, your mindset, how you envision things as well. You can tell just by talking to you, you know, very adaptable and, you know, you go with the flow and realize that there's a bigger picture at the end. So that's brilliant, man. Um, so, Jake, uh, the next question I've got. So we've all got um, one really positive trait or one really positive habit that's helped us achieve levels of success in our life. We've also got one hindering habit that really stops us breaking through to that level we really want to get to. What would you say would be your biggest positive habit or trait? And also what would be your biggest hindering habit or trait? Mm. Uh, I would say biggest positive would be uh, hard to think. Maybe, maybe tenacity it is definitely one of the stronger points for me. I think that's been good as well as uh, just having that desire and that dream and just chasing that. That sort of works hand in hand with the tenacity, I guess. Definitely. Keeping that in mind through through challenges or even through positives, you just keep feeding the, the good stuff. So exactly. that's been a strength for me. And uh, a challenge is probably sometimes being too hard on myself. Expecting perfection is something that is not realistic. So, yeah, when you make a mistake or things like that, it's putting in perspective and say, learn from that, now let's move forward. So. Um, yeah, it's just all, it's all a game of growth, I guess, over the years and, and learning sort of how to manage yourself well. Oh, for sure, man. Um, yeah, that's brilliant. Um, so Jake, I'd love to know also, what, what do you think would be the, uh, the best career advice that you've ever heard in your life or something that's really helped you along your path, uh, to follow your passion and purpose or keep you focused when, you know, times get really tough and you think, is this all worth it? Right. Um, I've had a lot of advice over the years. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, one of the biggest ones that stands out for me is go and do your thing. So what, what's exciting about racing for me is probably different to what's exciting about racing for the next driver or, or you know, Michael Schumacher or someone like that. We've got all our own favorite parts of it or our own perspective over it. And like you said before, when you can take on someone else's perspective and then it's not really yours anymore, you've just gone and adapted to that so being able to filter that out just take it on as information when when other people say things and know why you're doing it and that's all you need to sort of have in your head just keep the the pure um the pure thing that excites you about it and yeah i I think that's always worked well for me and has made sort of situations where there's an expectation to maybe go and do something a certain way uh, and I've gone, oh, I don't really want to do it that way. And it's made the decision easy. It's like, yeah, I'll do it the way I, that I'd like to. Exactly. That's brilliant. Thanks for sharing, man. Um, so, Jake, I guess everyone would love to know what a, what a typical day in the life of an international race car driver is like. So <laughs> what, would your, what would your standard day look like for you? Standard day? Well, I just oh, I got back from... No standard day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, right now it's pretty... pretty uh, I guess a bit crazy right now going shopping for trying to get my bed and everything like that sorted. Um, so I've got testing coming up this weekend. So I've been going to the simulator uh, workshop and uh, just getting some sort of uh, preparation in place for that. Um, Cause all the tracks I've learned this year have been new for me. So trying to just gather the experience before I get there has been good. Um, so in a normal week, it'd be, you know, simulated testing, uh, Skype meetings with, uh, the Smart Mind Institute, Dave Diggle. Yep. And, uh, we're also on a quest to, uh, continue growing our partnerships with companies and sponsors. So there's always a big part of my week on the media side as well. Um, going to events and stuff with the team and with Audi. So, uh, I can't say I have a consistent routine of like this is what happens every day, uh, but within a month, that's all of what goes on basically. That's perfect. That'd be uh, yeah, pretty exciting sort of a week as well. And I, I'd, <laughs> I'd love to get in that simulator too. That'd be uh, that'd be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's a blast. <laughs> yeah, so Jake, I'd love to know what what are you most excited about looking forward into your career? Or what where do you envision yourself in the next year or so? Right. Um, I guess th- <coughs> this is my first year in Japan. Uh, so over the next sort of year or two, I'm looking to establish myself well into the super GT series. Um, and then bigger picture than that, um, I plan to eventually transition over into formula E when the time's right for that. 
uh, either Formula E or the Le Mans series because for me, nice. both of those, uh, both the cars that they use in those are quite innovative, especially mm -hmm. Formula E, sort of paving the way for what the future of racing is going to be. So uh, as I said before, like that's what does it for me. That's what I find super exciting within the industry is that innovation, that quest for the future and continually pushing the boundaries. So a series like Formula E has all of that within it and uh if I can, yeah, move into that within the next few years and uh, start driving the future of where where the technology heads, then that, that would be ideal, really. Wow, man, that'd be that'd be amazing. I can't wait to see that come to fruition as well. See those Formula <laughs> E cars come out. That'd be crazy. So um, I've got a bit of a random question. I love to throw at all my guests, Jake. So uh, it's obviously from uh, career counselling, what I do with my business. Um, it's called the miracle question. So imagine if you went to sleep Ooh. tonight and every uh, overnight a miracle had occurred. And the next morning when you woke up, everything you ever wanted or any impact you ever wanted to make on the world had come true. Mm. You could like influence the lives of anyone you wanted or impact anything in your life. What would be something that would be mm. so important to you and something you'd love to impact in the world? Um, oh, well, <laughs> what a question. <laughs> um, that's a good question. I think uh, I have my own goals for racing. But uh, as far as like impacting things bigger than that, um, obviously I spoke about the technology and, and sort of driving the direction of that. Um, but I think also in general, just things that sort of help create the future in terms of technology and overall positivity amongst people. Uh, both of those things are very important to me. So if I could go and achieve something in either of those, then I'd be very happy. Yeah, man, that'd be that'd be amazing. And I think you're definitely on the right path to doing that too. I've seen all the work you're doing. It's yeah, big step forward in that direction. So yeah, hats Thanks. off to you, man. Um, Jake, so uh, yeah, we're just getting ready to wrap up soon, mate. But um, was there any parting advice you'd love to share with my audience to really help them through? Um, as I said, obviously it's tailored for people in their career, but is there anything that you feel that's really made a difference in your life, uh, any advice that could really help my audience out? Right. Um, yeah, I guess through through the years, I've sort of obviously wanted to do well for myself and do well for the people that support me, um, as I'm sure everyone does. Um, but being able to distance myself from that pressure or the expectations of those other people, people on the outside, has sort of enabled me to go and perform better and sort of go and you know, all my attention is then on me rather than potential expectations and things like that. For sure. And in the end, that works better because when you when you perform better because your focus is on yourself, then everyone sees a good performance anyway. So just sort of being able to deal with uh, external pressures and things like that uh, by just bringing the focus back onto you and knowing that if you've put all your focus onto yourself and gone for the best outcome, then all the, box, all the boxes are ticked, everything's covered then. That's brilliant, man. That, that's great advice. Go, go back and have a listen to that, guys. Great, uh, Jake said some great advice there. So, Jake, uh, as I said, we're just getting ready to wrap up, mate, but um, where would be the best place for anyone to get in contact with you? Say if anyone's looking to sponsorship, sponsor the amazing journey that you're, doing, uh, you're heading on with uh, your racing or if they want to reach out to you, where would be the best places to get in touch with you? Yeah, sure. So I've got a website, jakeparsons.net. And uh, if you want to go and check that out there, I've got a bunch of videos, photos uh, from my whole career and a contact page as well. So obviously love to connect with more and more people and uh, share the journey. And uh, yeah, so send me a message if uh, that's ever something you're interested in. Definitely. Jake, uh, thanks you, thank you so much for your time, man. I, I really appreciate it. I've uh, learned a lot and I'm, I'm so inspired and motivated by what you're doing, man. Um, keep up the amazing work. It's absolutely incredible to see. Thanks very much. Like I said, thanks for reaching out. And uh, yeah, it'd be great if you know someone listens to this and they can take something good from it, then we'll both be very happy. Definitely, Jake. And I uh, can't wait to see you in that Formula E, mate. Can't wait to see that <laughs> come to fruition. So. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. And uh, stay tuned next week where we've got another incredible guest on the show who's really going to help you break through those new levels in your career. So stay tuned then. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. 
As a listener to the Career Breakthrough Series, you can claim this amazing discounted bundle price of $197 for all three of our amazing career development courses. The courses involved in this package are Mastering a Killer Career Mindset, which is going to help you uncover and remove limiting beliefs that are holding you back in your career. It's also going to help you reframe any negative thought patterns and have you start forging an unstoppable positive growth mindset. The next course we've got is Uncover Your True Career Needs, which is going to help you get crystal clear on what you really want out of your career to ensure maximum fulfillment and satisfaction. It's also going to help you be confident in what makes you unique and stand out in the workforce. As well as this course included in this bundle is Unleashing Your Formidable Strengths and Skills. This course is going to help you to uncover and utilize your amazing strengths and skills and teach you how to use these to position yourself as a standout candidate or employee. It's also going to enhance your strength to capitalize on career opportunities and remove any threats and surpass any weaknesses to fast track your career success. So guys, take advantage of this amazing offer. As I said, it's for the listener of this show only. It's a $94 saving. So if you head to the link above, which is BIT dot l y forward slash career bundle one c a r e e r b u n d l e and the number one so just again guys it was b i t dot l y forward slash c a r e e r b u n d l e one Guys, be sure to jump on this. It's an amazing opportunity that's really going to help you fast track your career success and get into a career you truly love. Thank you again for tuning in. I can't wait to share another incredible episode with you next week. So stay tuned then. Thanks a lot.